It's Thursday, July 30, and this is your Barbados City Evening News Update. It was a send-off fit for a legend. Hundreds of Barbadians celebrated the life of cricketing great Sir Everton Weeks as he made his final appearance at the Mecca of West Indies cricket, Kensington Oval, this morning. Top figures in West Indies cricket led the lineup at the official funeral. Prime Minister Mia Motley and her cabinet, Governor General Dame Sandra Mason, Chief Justice Sir Marston Gibson, former Chief Justice Sir David Simmons, and countless others. Sir Everton, who died at age 95 on July 1, was remembered as a man of excellence both on and off the field of play. President of the Barbados Cricket Association, Conde Riley, noted that Sir Everton, the last remaining member of the three W's, helped to catapult the West Indies cricket team on the world stage. He remains the standard bearer. In a first-class career from 1944 to 1964, Sir Everton used Test Cricket's international stage between 1948 and 1958 to or forever establish himself as one of cricket's finest players. A member of the famed 3Ws alongside fellow knights Sir Frank Worrell and Sir Clyde Walker, his performances within the West Indies top order batting helped to found West Indies cricket as one of international sports' first box office draws. After racing to 1,000 runs in his first 12 innings, an achievement shared only with Herbert Sutcliffe, Severton went on to record feats yet to be surpassed the most prominent being his five test centuries in consecutive innings. Put into perspective, after 72 years and over 2,000 test matches, this amazing feat still remains. Bearing testimony of how a talent bestowed is best nurtured. Adrian Donovan delivered a tribute on behalf of the family. He gave a sneak peek in the humanitarian side of the cricket legend. He was a humanitarian of enormous proportions. After he retired from cricket, he made it his business to visit his dear friend Billy Donovan in Maxwell Gardens every Christmas day. This activity on Christmas day included some of the best behaved prisoners who were at that time called trustees and they were given permission to leave the prison house for this particular event. They were housed at that time at the Glendary Prison located in Station Hill, and they were treated to a delicious luncheon. Sir Everton would specially bake a ham for this occasion, and he brought about some packs of trumpeters, which were the cigarettes of the day. He would discuss with them after the meal about living the good life, taking care of the family, and being a productive member of society. In his eulogy, Professor Hilary Beckles noted that the Caribbean and Barbados was blessed with the greatness of the humble Sir Everton Weeks. We are gathered to celebrate and salute that special gift of grace, gentility, and greatness. A consciousness so precise and profound as to be near extinction in this competitive culture of global humanity. In the life and times of Sir Everton, we were called to bear witness to the effect of this phenomenon in our midst. The volcanic eruption in Westbury village of a man, little in physical form and less so in monetary value, rising to become the greatest giant in a global world filled with giants, completing the near impossible climb to the top. 
Another news this Tuesday, a 62-year-old man collapsed and died this morning while on the job around 7.30. Owen Gunning of Dukes Valley, Nelson Street, St. Michael, was working on a construction site along Boarded Hall, St. George. Gunning, an employee of C.O. Williams Construction Limited, was assigned the task of a flagman to regulate the flow of traffic along the said stretch of road through the construction site. Police are continuing investigations. Ambulance personnel were summoned on arrival carried out checks on him, he did not respond. Circumstances of death is unknown, treating it as an unnatural death. I want to take this opportunity to extend sympathy on behalf of the Commissioner of Police and the Royal Baptist Police Force to relatives and friends of the deceased. Health authorities warmly welcome a contingent of 95 nurses from Ghana who will help to alleviate the shortage of nurses in the local health care system. Health and Wellness Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, Tourism Minister Senator Lisa Cummins, Executive Chairman of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital Juliet Bino Sutherland, met the healthcare workers on the tarmac at the Grantley Adams International Airport. The team proudly bearing their national flag briefly celebrated their arrival in Barbados. There's regional and international news after this short break. To regional news now, health authorities in Trinidad and Tobago suggest the country may very well be facing a new wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. More on this report from TTT News. The number of positive cases now stand at 156, with two additional cases yesterday, which have been linked to previous cases in the recent past, as well as one new case early this morning at 888, where we had another case that was linked to possible cases that came before. The contact tracing has just begun on that case. It's a reality that has brought the Health Ministry and by extension Chief Medical Officer Dr. Roshan Parasram closer to a definitive pronouncement on a situation that many had hoped would never come to pass. In light of our recent findings, remembering that our last case, 116, was on April 20th and our first new local case was detected on July 20th, 20th of July 2020. This is likely to be the start of a new phase of COVID-19 infections in Trinidad and Tobago. Dr. Paris Ram says it is suspected that some of the recent cases are linked to a group of immigrants who recently entered TNT's borders, adding that through the Ministry of National Security, efforts are being made to locate those immigrants who may have had or still have the virus. But as it stands, health officials are relying on contact tracing to get a clearer idea of the situation which in itself has been proving to be a challenge. On the international scene, former U.S. President Barack Obama has sharply criticized what he described as Republican attempts at voter suppression in a speech at the funeral of civil rights leader John Lewis. He said people in power were attacking our voting rights with surgical precision and called for wide reform. He also decried the police killing of George Floyd and the subsequent use of federal agents against protesters. Bo Connor may be gone. But today, we witness with our own eyes police officers kneeling on the necks of black Americans. George Wallace may be gone, but we can witness our federal government sending agents to use tear gas and batons against peaceful demonstrators. We may no longer have to guess the number of jelly beans in a jar in order to cast a ballot. But even as we sit here, there are those in power who are doing their darndest to discourage people from voting by closing polling locations 
and targeting minorities and students with restrictive ID laws and attacking our voting rights with surgical precision, even undermining the Postal Service in the run-up to an election that's going to be dependent on mail-in ballots so people don't get sick. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.